Hello and welcome to another flying video of Flight Level 180. Today we are doing a demonstration and back to basics uh, flight with the Carinado V35B Bonanza from, uh, from Carinado in X-Plane 11. And this airplane uh, is one that I have a, a pretty good, uh, let's see if we can get a nice view of it. This is an airplane I have a lot of experience with. As you can tell, it's a, it's a V-tail, uh, which means it's a little bit faster, but a little bit less stable longitudinally than a standard V-tail. Uh, this is a true 170 knot airplane. Uh, it's really an impressive bird, very fast, uh, challenging to handle if you aren't used to high performance airplanes. But I'm gonna show you, give you some tips on how to do that. So let's go ahead and jump into the cockpit. So this airplane, I have, let's see, 12 hours in this Carinado version. Uh, there is another version called uh, uh, the Rep. So you can take and install a Rep or Reality Expansion Pack add-on that goes over the top of this airplane. And I have about 200 hours in that. Plus I have some real world time in, in V35B. So I know this airplane intimately. I've read uh, the, the book on the uh, on the Bonanza is the uh, Flying the Beach Bonanza by John Ackelbar. Uh, if you're interested and you want more in-depth information than you can handle, that's a great book to pick up. So let's jump into it. Uh, this is the cockpit and I would say it's very representative. I mean it's amazing how close it is to the real thing. Uh, the only real difference from the airplanes that were rolling off the, the assembly line in the 70s and early 80s is we have the uh, Garmin 430 here and we have uh, this engine monitor and maybe this autopilot might be, uh, might be non-standard. But other than that, this is exactly what it looks like. Uh, you'll notice something that obviously jumps off the screen here is that we have a, a yoke that is a single yoke. So there's a button over here that allows you, you can, even in mid-flight, you can take and just grab the yoke and move it over to this side and uh, give the control to the co-pilot. It's pretty cool. You can actually, an, an option is you can get a, a dual yoke. So that's, uh, that's a very common thing you'll see in V35Bs. Uh, so now the point of this video is to go through the basics. Uh, this is not intended to show you, you know, complicated uh, VOR approaches or NDBs or even use of the radios. This is a point A to point B using GPS and learning some of the basics of how to fly this airplane and some of my recommendations is how you fly it. Uh, if you want some of the more advanced topics, go to my other videos, okay? So let's go ahead and go for it. So. I'm not going to go through a bunch of checklists. I'm sure you're saying thank God because that's painful and I think perhaps an arguably better way to fly. And before I get there, the this is for flight simulation purposes only. If you're a real world pilot or thinking about applying this to real world flying, you can take my ideas and talk to a CFI or do your own research, but you know, it's not on me. This is not for real world flying. So legal stuff aside, uh, I think a good way to approach flying is to basically think through every single item in the cockpit and basically do a flow pattern of, you know, we're going to do a flow, which basically we go up this way and then we go across this way and go over here and then we're done. So that's going to be the flow of how we set up the airplane and get ready for fly for flight. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing you want to do is obviously check to make sure your controls are free and correct. Uh, then we're gonna hide the yoke because there's nothing else in there that is the slightest bit operational. So then you can go ahead and set your fuel. Uh, we have pretty fuel tanks, so both are gonna be fine. Then we're going to go ahead and get ready to start the airplane. So we're gonna turn on the battery, start the alternator. It's one of points of dispute among uh, Beechcraft owners and pilots is whether you turn the alternator on or not. I fall on the turn the alternator on to reduce the stress on the uh, on the uh, on the starter or on the uh, on the electrical system when you actually turn it on afterwards so anyway but you can do whatever you want there turn on your beacon and then we're going to do this we're going to take and slide all the your prop mixture and throttle all the way forward and then you're going to do this and this is something that is not muddled correctly in this airplane 
So you're watch the fuel flow. So this in the real airplane, it would take and gradually go up to about 14 over the course of four seconds. Then that would stop at 14. Then you turn it off. And in the rep version, it does it correctly. It even gets the sounds perfectly correct. Uh, but in this one, I don't think this does anything. Then once you do that, you take and you pull the throttle back all the way, and then you go forward about a quarter of an inch, very little, and then you can go ahead, clear prop, and start the engine. And horrible engine sounds. It's not at all what it sounds like, and it's not starting. So my recommendation, and I don't know whether this is my airplane, or my version of this airplane, or whether it's just you know this crappy uh, build, but I can't get the, 90% of the time I can't get the airplane to start, and I'm starting exactly how real world bonanzas are started, so who knows. Uh, so okay, engine is on, first thing we check is the oil pressure, that is correct. For some reason they have the fuel pump on, so we'll turn that off, and then we want to increase the RPM till about 1000 RPM and that's to prevent the plugs from fouling and then I'm going to basically start reducing my EGT all the way until the engine starts chugging and then I'm going to pick it up a little bit more and that's really to reduce the prevent the plugs from fouling so let's see we're going to go uh, looks like we have a little more fuel in the left engine so we'll go left engine then we'll go on here and we'll turn off the taxi lights uh, yeah, we can turn on the taxi lights and everything else we're gonna we're gonna leave on the beacon and leave off the map lights. Then we're gonna go over here. This all these need to be pushed in. This needs to be in both for the magnetos. This is your parking brake. We're gonna leave that as is. The this is the this is the uh, elevator trim and you want to leave that at zero or slightly above. Uh, it's a real problem in this airplane if you don't set that correctly, so you gotta get that set correctly. Uh, cow flaps are out. We'll talk about those later. Flaps are up. We're going to take off the flaps up. Uh, engine controls are set correctly. This is in off. Gear is down. These are in off. These are the fuses. You want to make sure those are in. Uh, you want to move this alternator. And if the avionics aren't on, you can hit and turn that on and off. Now let's go ahead and put in our destination. So we're going to go, and just to show you where we are, we are uh, at Carefree Sky Ranch. North, uh, the Phoenix Valley of Arizona, United States, and what this place is is it's a little private airport, very elite private airport, in the uh, on the basically very very northeast part of town. You can see we're up at 2,500 feet. Uh, Phoenix Airport is 500 feet, so we're 2,000 feet above uh, the Phoenix Airport. So it's much cooler up here, and it's it's a really pretty cool community. So anyway, we're gonna got fly from. Uh, Payson, uh, we're going to fly to Payson from F Sky Ranch, and Payson is up here. Oh, there's some mountains right back here that you can't see. We're going to fly over there and drop into Payson. And pay us, Payson is a high altitude airport, so that's going to be interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the direct key, and then we're going to hit the inner knob, and that's going to start us on the first letter. It's K-P-A-N. So I'm using the inner knob to advance, and then I use the outer knob to move one space over. And then the inner knob, outer knob, inner knob to go up to K-Pan. And you hit enter, and then you hit enter to activate. And now we have everything set up. So it's 38.5 nautical miles. We'll be there before you know it. And the track to the airport is 36 degrees. And our current track is 332 degrees, which is how you interpret that. Now the second thing I want to set up, since it's such a short flight, we want to be ahead of the game. So the pattern altitude at Payson is 6,200 feet. So we're going to take and we're going to cross the midfield at Payson at 3,700 feet, which is 500 over pattern altitude, and we're going to do a teardrop entry into the runway 6. So what you do is we're clicking the middle button to activate the cursor, then we use the right button to change your location, just like you did on the other window, and then use the left middle button to change, your, uh, to change the number. Now, I'm setting my vertical speed profile at 500 feet down, and then I'm not actually putting in, you're not seeing a number here because we're below that altitude, but as soon as we get over 3,700 feet, I'm sorry, it's not 3,700, it's 6,700 feet. As soon as we get over 6,700 feet, we're gonna be able to, uh, we're going to see this number populate, and we'll start down when it shows 450, so you'll see that in a second. So, good. So let's go ahead and check our altimeter. So I'm going to M for map, 
and I'm going to zoom in on my airplane and then I'm going to click on the field and we are wind is calm altimeter is 3009 so we're going to go ahead and set our altimeter for 3009 and that's good and let's see so we have our RPM set we have our all of our, our engine instruments are good our cylinder temperature is good our EGT is showing way higher than it would in the real airplane so we're going to ignore that that's just wrong we're going to set our so uh, notice how it has the nav flag up here that means we're in VLOOP mode so let's turn that to GPS mode so I'm hitting the CDI key and then I want to set this to runway heading which it is and since there's no, if there were winds, so let's say there were wind from 010, I would set that there. But given there's no wind, I'm just going to point it right at runway heading. And that gives me a visual indication. And I'll talk to you about why I'm setting that when we get there. Now, altimeter is good, vertical speed, everything looks good here. Then the last thing we want to do is we want to take, and this is the altitude component of the autopilot. So I'm going here and I'm setting my final altitude so I'm going to set 8500 feet and then I'm using the mouse roller and then I'm going to click in the middle knob and I'm going to set my uh, my climb rate now this is I'm going to talk to you about this as we get there but I'm going to set 850 feet and that's it now we're ready to go uh, so let's go ahead and taxi out we'll do our run up and we'll get rolling so go ahead and release the brakes and off we go Now, one thing that's very important on almost any engine that I can speak very specifically to the IO520 and IO550s that power Bonanzas, and IO470, I guess, but uh, the very important thing is you don't want to take and run up the engine over idle RPM, which is max of 1200, until you get the engine going. And the reason for that is that the theory is that the vast majority of engine wear happens in the first 30 seconds before the engine is warm and everything is lubricated. So don't do that. Don't, uh, don't get your engine fired up until you have that CHT gauge in the, in the green. So I'm going to take and push my mixture up. I'm going to go up to about 1700 RPM and here you're going to see a bug with this airplane. I'm going to pull, as you can see there, I'm pulling my propeller out and nothing's happening. My RPM isn't dropping nothing's happening so some there's some bug with that that's really annoying second thing you would do is you would look at the uh, you would take and check the magneto down here so you flip the right uh, look for a 50 drop left look for a 50 drop and then return the straight ahead but that is uh, not working I'm gonna check to make sure my fuel flow is working that is working so we are ready to go let's go ahead and line up and we're gonna check the things that will kill us if we do it wrong. So controls we've already checked, they're free and clear. Instruments are good. Gas is good and we're on the correct tank. Flaps are up and we verify that on the gauge right there at the bottom of the screen right there. And let's see, trim is set and we're slightly nose up which is exactly what we want. And uh, prop is full, mixture is full and We've done a run up, so we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and hit it. So the plan here is that we're going to go full throttle, full mixture, full prop, full power. You always want to do that in any airplane. Uh, then once we hit 67, we're going to check our engine instruments to make sure everything is good. Then once we hit around 67 knots, we're going to rotate. Once we're clear of the runway and we know our, we're not going to touch down again, we're going to bring our gear up. Then we're going to pitch for 120 knots then we're going to immediately bring our RPM down to 2500. And I'll talk to you about why I'm doing that once we get in the air. So let's go ahead and make this happen. So bring up the power smoothly, but you don't want to overspeed the props. So RPM, fuel flow, manifold pressure, oil pressure, and EGT all looks good. Airspeed is alive. A little narrow runway here, so we got to keep, uh, keep on the ball in terms of keeping our eyes on the, uh, keeping us on the center line. There we go. We're at 67 knots. Let's go ahead and start easing it back. Okay, there we go. Let's bring our gear up. And I'm going to bring my, man, my prop RPM down to 2500 RPM. And that's going to lose us about, uh, that's going to lose us about 15% power. But the reason I do that is 
uh, is for noise sensitivity, especially at this airport. You're flying over North Scottsdale, which is probably one of the most noise sensitive areas in the United States. It's a very wealthy area. And you don't, uh, you don't want to be blasting over people's heads at 2700 RPM. It's very loud. So I live near an airport and I can vouch for the fact that you hear the morons who don't know to crank their engine RPM back. Uh, it's extremely annoying and very loud when, uh, when you hear those people doing that. So now we're 700 feet above AGL, so let's go ahead and take and turn 30 degrees left to our course. And anything below 900 feet, I'm going to, within 30 degrees left or right, I'm going to look for some place to put the airplane down. That's 900 feet. Now, at this altitude, I can actually make it back to the runway. So, and I would use my bearing pointer there. I know that I need to turn all the way back. So from here, I would turn left at 45 degree bank all the way until I was slightly past the, the bottom of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, of the heading, uh, heading pointer. And then I would know the runway is right in front of me. It's just a nice trick that really helps a lot. If you want to learn more about engine, engine outs, Go ahead and uh, go ahead and watch my video. I have another video where I talk about that. I actually, do them in the Tiger. So let's go ahead and get things going. So we're going to set our our horizontal course by going direct to. So we're going to reset the line. And let me show you why I do that. So if you look here. You know we set the line while we are on the ground, but we're actually kind of off that line. So just to be make sure we don't do all sorts of machinations to get back on the line, we hit direct enter, and then we hit down here, we hit nav. Okay? And you notice the airplane will, I've got my hands off the stick, and it's adjusting. And now we're going to go ahead and hit uh, V speed. We're going to hit the V speed button engage over here, then we're going to hit the altitude engage button. You can see altitude is armed. So now we're going to start climbing out. And you're going to notice the airplane is going to be able to manage this, uh, this rate of climb and be able to, it's going to bubble up to 120 knots. Now, that is a problem with this airplane. This airplane is not capable in the real world unless it's turbocharged at, you know, at 5,000 feet to be able to climb at, at 120 knots and 850 feet per minute. That's just not really realistic. So uh, more like, you know, maybe 650 or something. It would be more realistic, but in, it's not even close as you get up higher. The performance is just too good in this Carinata version. So uh, just something that's a little bit disappointing. It's, it's better in the rep version, but not quite perfect. So anyway, uh, back to the RPM stuff. So even if I were taking off from sea level, I still pull my RPM back. And you know, you hear, you look in the old POHs and you hear old school people talking about, oh, you don't want to be over square. And what that means is that the RPM is lower than the manifold pressure. But that is perfectly okay. You, if you actually look in the Continental Engine Manuals, it's totally okay to have over square operation. And, you know, you, can, you could actually be 25 inches of manifold pressure at 1900 RPM. That is not going to hurt the engine. And when you're flying Lena Peak, which we aren't going to go into in depth here, that's, uh, it's actually much better for the engine to be running over square. So I'm going to leave a video link in the description if you are interested in, in learning more about that. Now, as we're climbing up, we're over 3,000 feet, so we want to start leaning. And I would have been leaning already, but this, uh, this airplane doesn't handle leaning very well. So. Uh, we're gonna, I'm just gonna lean it a little bit, and as you, the reason you need to lean as you're climbing is that as you climb, the air density gets thinner as you get higher in the atmosphere, and that makes the fuel mixture more rich, so there's a higher ratio of gas to air, and you're getting farther and farther from, and when you take off, when you're full rich, you're actually more rich than peak power. You don't really want to be flying at peak power, but you want to be you don't want to be totally full rich in, in all of your climb. You want to be slowly pulling back your, your, uh, your, uh, I'm sorry, your mixture as you're making the climb. So anyway, so I'm going to show you how to lean the airplane uh, as we as we get up uh, as we get up to cruise. Now, if you look there, we're almost a hair under 120 120 knots, and we're climbing at 850 feet per minute. So. Uh, this is a super bonanza. I don't, I don't really know what's going on here. This is not a 
turbo bonanza. So uh, there's, this is just a normally aspirated airplane. So something is up there. Uh, okay, so I'm thinking we're just gonna level off at 7,500 7, feet. So we're almost there. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna hit this button when we hit the altitude. So ALT, ready, set, hit. So you can see there at 7,490, that's close enough for government work. And the first thing I do when I level off and cruise is I switch my tank. So I've been burning a lot of fuel at a high rate from the left tank. Now we're switching to the right tank. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my cow flaps. And let me show you that. So if we look at the outside of the airplane, if you look right there, those are the cow flaps, these doors right here. And what those do is they let more air into the engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to close those doors. And if we look back out, you notice those cow flap doors are closed now. And what that, there's two reasons to do this, two primary reasons. Uh, the first reason is that, uh, that it gives you three knots of extra airspeed. And the second reason is to keep your engine warm. So as your airspeed goes up, you know, we're approaching 150 knots of true air, of indicated airspeed. That's air that's ripping into the cowling and keeping the engine cool, which is a great thing. And it's really not so necessary to have extra warmth and cruise, but as soon as you start the descent, just to keep that airplane in the, the green, when you go even faster uh, in your descent, you uh, want to keep those, those uh, cow flaps closed. So let's go ahead and slide. I'm going to, I don't want to go over those mountains, I want to go left of them. So I'm going to set my, my heading bug over here, and I'm going to go ahead and click the heading button, so HDG, and you notice the airplane is going to adjust on its own. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you the leaning as we're adjusting. Now, I want you to look, so we're going to look at the mixture knob. So I'm going to, to lean, I, let me go full rich, so I'm going to push it all the way in. Now, look at the EGT. Uh, you can see the fuel flow is very high here, and as I pull that back, my fuel flow is going to go down. Now, look at the EGT here. It's very low because I'm very rich. That means I'm dumping a ton of, an EGT is an exhaust gas temperature, so it's the temperature of the gases that are coming out of the cylinders and exiting out the tailpipe. So as we pull the mixture back, you're going to see the EGT rise, which is what you'd expect to see in a real airplane. You can see the fuel flow is coming down. But watch this. When you get to about right there, you would see the EGT peak. And that's called peak EGT, and that's your maximum efficiency. It's stoichiometric efficiency in terms of burning the fuel. But then you would see you'd see the EGT start to drop, and that's called lean a peak, where you're leaner than that peak EGT. But it doesn't work that way in this airplane. You can see it's just going up and up and up and up, and pretty soon it's going to drop, and that's because the engine is coughing and dying. Boom! See that the engine's starting to cough. So let's go back up. So that is something that's not done correctly in this airplane. You can't fly lean a peak, and it, it just doesn't work. And then the last thing, uh, and if you wanna if you wanna play around and learn that stuff, you can uh, you can play with the the REP version, okay? Because they do do that stuff correctly, and they tell you exactly how to fly lean a peak and rich a peak. It's great. It's a nice learning experience. P pulling my prop RPM down to about 2200, and you can see it actually does adjust when you're at full throttle. And let's go ahead and turn off our lights. I forgot to turn on my uh, landing light, but I guess it's not a big deal. See, it's pretty late in the day. We're going to get some nice nighttime approach. So let's go ahead and pop up our flight plan. And let's see. We're going to kill the message, not the messenger. And so we're 18.1 nautical miles from the airport, and we're six minutes out. And you see our ground speed is 176 knots. So if you look out there, that spot right there is the airport. So that's where we're headed. So we're going to go here. We're going to fly over here, we're going to enter, do a crosswind pattern along with a teardrop. We're going to circle back this way, come in this way, and land on runway 6. Okay? Pretty fun, pretty simple. Now, okay, so let's see what else we need to show you here. Uh, other than that, that's the general approach on how to fly this airplane. So, uh, now I'm going to talk to you about the descent in a few minutes. So let's see, we are, so we're at, now it's our required speed to hit hay pan is going to be 168 feet per minute. We want to descend at 500, so as we get up towards 500 feet per minute, we're going to want to activate our descent. So 
let's go ahead and activate the, we're gonna go back to nav so we can fly straight to the airport because we have a clear shot. And now we're gonna go ahead and set up our autopilot for the descent. So I'm looking for 6,700 feet to cross the airport. And I'm also looking for a descent speed of 850 feet per minute. So I'm just scrolling this down to, okay, that looks good. Uh, I'm scrolling this down to 500 feet per minute. And that is your money speed in the beach bonanza. If for your descent, pretty much your descents are all going to be targeted at going at 500 feet per minute. Any faster and you're going to get up into the yellow arc on the, on the speed tape, so basically here. And any slower than that, you're really not taking advantage of the full capabilities of the airplane. So your goal is really to be 500 knots. Now if you're flying IFR and you, your controller hasn't given you a descent, something you can do is you can ask for a, uh, you can ask for a descent. Uh, 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 Bonanza two golf mic asking for lower, you know, so you're ahead of the game. So four nautical, four minutes, you can see that the second tab is the map and we're getting pretty close. Now, something I want to recommend to you if you are a serious simmer or you're training for real foil flying is go and get a, go and get an iPad and go and buy a subscription to Four Flight. So Four Flight, it's not cheap, it's 100 bucks a year, but it's not too bad. And I, I think you really, um, it integrates perfectly with, uh, and I'm going ahead and switching the heading because we're going to go up right to about here. So, but it integrates, Four Flight integrates perfectly with, uh, with, uh, with X-Plane. It's amazing. You basically just hit one, change one setting and boom, whenever you turn on X-Plane, you turn on Four Flight, it, it integrates perfectly. It's really an amazing thing. So, uh, so that will, you know, if you're having trouble visualizing these patterns, how to apply these patterns, it will show you exactly how to apply the patterns. So you say, I want to fly the teardrop, uh, midfield, 45 degree left traffic pattern to runway six, and it will show you on the map the exact course you want to fly to, to make that midfield crossing, and it's beautiful. So, strongly recommend that. I'm not using it today, but uh, normally I would, uh, especially in an airport that I don't know well. I was at this airport uh, very recently, so, uh, so I'm pretty comfortable with it. So, okay. See as we get closer and closer, our, our vertical speed required is picking up. And when we get to about 440, 450, we're going to go ahead and hit the vertical speed engage here, and then we're going to hit the altitude hold here. And 401, it's getting faster and faster. 416. Now the plan is going to be once we do our teardrop entry into the downwind of the pattern, okay? Let's go ahead, so we're gonna close this. We're not gonna need this much anymore. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to the distance page. Okay, so now we're going down. You can notice the airspeed is coming up and it's gonna be approaching the yellow arc. Uh, if there's any turbulence at all, uh, you don't wanna be uh, flying in the yellow arc. Probably today we can get away with a little bit, but I'm, I'm really not comfortable. So you can see there's the runway right there. So we're getting close. So I'm gonna take, this airplane is not responsive to RPM changes, so if you did this in the real airplane, that would uh, really slow the airplane down and I would crank the mixture down a bit, but you know, the airplane does not respond to it, so we've got to do it the sloppy way, which is bring the manifold pressure down. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to fly by the numbers, and the concept there is that you are setting the same exact settings on every single approach you do into the pattern. So I like to set 22 inches of manifold pressure and seven, sorry, 17 inches of manifold pressure, 2200 RPM, and I like to be lean a peak. So that is the goal. And if you do that, it makes it, you try to find a number for your airplane where you actually can fly the, the exact same way every single time you enter the pattern and it makes it much easier so you aren't twiddling with you aren't twiddling with the uh, you aren't twiddling with the mixture and power settings as you're approaching it's just straightforward okay let's go ahead and start our midfield crossing and we are now at 6700 feet so we should be able to bring our uh, our power will come back nicely Okay, there we 
go. We're going to try to stay right at 6,700 feet. Make sure the pattern is clear before we jump into it. There we go. So now you can see there I've got the heading set up down here and you can actually see that we're right on the, uh, we're right at 90 degrees to the actual pattern. And if you look at the GPS, you can see that we are 0.3 from the field, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and right over the midfield now. So we would, we're going to take and fly two miles on this course, and then we're going to make a right one teardrop turn to the right, and then enter the, the pattern. And as our speed comes down, we want to keep trimming up our keep trimming our elevator pressure up so we don't have back pressure on the stick. So right there and looking good. So we're one nautical mile. We have one nautical mile to go. Uh, you can see there's a lot of terrain around here, but this is actually a pretty safe way to enter the uh, the enter the pattern. Uh, I wouldn't really want to do this at night uh, with all this terrain, but given there's just barely enough light, we should be okay. So. Let's see, we are 1.8, 1 1.9, let's go ahead and start our turn, and we're looking for a right one turn, so a nice coordinated turn, and that should put us right into where we need to be to hit that pattern of 45 degrees, so looking good. Now, uh, now the plan is going to be when we actually, we're going to enter the downwind, when we are a beam the numbers in the downwind, and I'm going to go ahead and start descending a little bit here. Uh, when we're a beam the numbers on the downwind, we are going to uh, we are going to drop our gear. Then when we we're going to go down 250 feet or thereabouts, that's about right when there's no wind. Uh, we're going to go down 250 feet uh, from pattern altitude, which will get us to 750 feet. Then we're going to turn left base. Once we go left base, we're going to drop one notch of flaps. I really like one notch in this airplane. Uh, anymore is it's not necessary. It's nice to have it if you need it, but you know I plan for one notch, and it's great with crosswinds. And then once uh, once you are, we are in the, we have our flaps down. Then very quickly, we're going to be turning. Uh, we're going to be turning final, and we're going to do our gumps on final and touchdown, we're going to be looking to be going about 70, 75 knots over the fence and touchdown around 65 knots. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And you'll see that with the, uh, with the using 17 inches of manifold pressure, and we're getting a little high there, so we'll keep it down, and it's, it should flow very, very nicely. So there's the field right there. Let's keep it coordinated. You need to trim this airplane a lot. You need to know your, you need to know your settings, your uh, your trim tabs. And we're going to be trimming a lot. When we drop our gear, we're going to do 25 up clicks of the gear to make sure uh, to make sure we're we're not putting back pressure on the stick. So I'm going to go ahead and turning downwind right now, and everything is looking pretty good. You can see, you know, we're still rolling right along. We're 130 knots indicated. So probably 150 knots true, but you know, as we uh, as we drop our gear, you're going to see a significant. Uh, I overshot that a little bit. You're going to see a significant drop in airspeed. Okay, there we are, beating the numbers. A little bit, a little bit high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. So 25 clicks should get us about where we want to be. Our descent is going to be uh, 500 feet per minute. And there's 200 feet, that's 800 feet AGL. And going a little fast, so let's go ahead and turn our left base. See, there's a lot of terrain in this airport. It's, uh, this would not be a fun approach in dark. I don't know if I would even want to fly into this airport other than a direct, uh, direct, a direct line just straight into the runaway. It's, if you find this pattern without lights, that would be uh, unpleasant. Okay, let's go ahead and drop our flaps. So we're looking for one notch of flaps. Flaps are down, gear is down. Let's check. Okay, we are uh, going to overshoot a little bit here. So let's go a little bit steep, steeper. 
that was not the best job, but we're still okay. Nice, luckily this airplane is nice and maneuverable. Okay, so we are a little high and a little hot, so let's start bringing our power down. Okay, now this airplane, uh, if you didn't have your gear down, in the normal airplane, in the rep version, you'd have a gear horn that would uh, start going ah, 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 and that does not, uh, that does not work in this version. That's another feature that's missing. So 80 knots, we're looking really good. So gas, undercarriage, Mr. Prop. Uh, hard to remember these things when you're talking. And let's go ahead and set this puppy down. And you notice there's no, no squeaking or anything. So uh, it's, uh, there's, no, there's no sound from the gear impacting the runway. But that's basically it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, not the best approach I've ever done, just, just from being distracted. But uh, So that is basically it. So let's go ahead and uh, turn around, exit the runway, and we'll shut things down and conclude things. So I really, uh, I really like this, this airplane in general. It's, uh, well, I love the Bonanza. That's maybe my favorite single engine prop. It's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, but with regard to this Carinado version, you know, it's, it's a little arcadey. Uh, there's a lot of things that don't quite, quite work correct. The performance is too good. The performance doesn't change enough. The, you know, the mixtures don't work. There's a lot of other little things that are annoying as you're flying it. But generally, it's pretty good. You know, for a Carinado airplane, and I'm not a big fan of Carinados in general, uh, so I'm pulling out the parking brake here, it, it's good. Uh, if you really want reality, if you want something to poke around in that's pretty close to, to a Bonanza, this is pretty fun. It's a good airplane to buy. If you want to have reality and learn about mixture and leaning and have the challenges of a realistic flight model, uh, this, uh, this airplane is a, is a good choice. So now I'm leaning my mixture. It's already lean, so I'm good there. I want to reduce my RPM to between 1,000 and 1,200. Uh, I'm bringing my flaps up, FLAPS. Flaps are up. Do not touch the gear. I'm bringing up my bringing out my cow flaps to cool down the engine now that we're landed, and then I'm bringing my horizontal uh, my uh, my trim tab to zero. Uh, go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on my taxi light. Everything else is off. And let's see. Is there anything else I need to do? I need to turn off my uh, transponder. I need to turn off my avionics. Now I'm just going to go ahead and shut down the airplane. So. Uh, that's it you need to, that's the only thing you need to do if uh, you're shutting down the airplane. Now you just pull back the prop uh, mixture and power and turn off the alternator and battery and then you can turn off the, the key and you're done. So that's pretty much how to fly this airplane. Uh, if you want more advanced stuff, I have a lot of some two or three videos of advanced uh, navigation in the Bonanza. Uh, doing instrument ap approaches and NDB approaches, all sorts of challenging stuff. And I talk more about mixture management in the rep version. Uh, I recommend those to you. If you want to see something else, if you other videos you want, any ideas, I'm definitely up to them and I respond pretty well to uh, requests if they're within reason. So I hope you enjoyed and enjoy this airplane. I hope, uh, I hope you like it as much as I do. Have a good day.